Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do. You like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out uh, three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And that includes new favorite artists, which I've got to say, I've got one on the line right now. Kara Jackson, hello. Hey. It's uh it's such a it's such a pleasure to meet you. Uh especially I've become such a fan uh after hearing the songs on this new album, Why Does the Earth Give Us People to Love? Uh we've been playing pawn shop at WFPK in like heavy rotation for like a month now. First off, my congratulations on everything that this album is. Thank you so much. And thank you for playing pawn shop also. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was funny because you said something right before we started recording here about being a Libra. And I actually wrote that down because a fellow Libra right here. And, oh, uh, <laughs> period. You know, yeah, I, I've seen you write about that a few times. So uh, I was I was joking, my wife, who turned me on to most of the what the, the signs mean and everything. And as I was learning the other day, she was asking me something. And I said, I said, you know, though, about Libra, it's the scales. And that's really just a shrug. For me, it's a shrug. <laughs> I actually love that because I feel like people always say that Libras are really indecisive, but I feel like as a Libra myself, sometimes I just don't want to have to make a decision at all. So I feel like a shrug actually is more accurately how I feel sometimes. Yeah, well, <laughs> this says it all right there. Well, I'm glad we, we found that level anyway, because I completely understand yeah. where you're coming from on that. So again, seriously, this this record is incredible. And this is this is the first full length album, right? Mm -hmm. it's my debut first time putting out an album yeah so let's hear the journey to here because as the story goes as as people are becoming familiar with your story you were at national poet laureate uh, a couple of years ago which huge um but you've also dabbled in music for for what how long when, when did when did music become a part of your life well music actually it's funny because i yes i was the national youth poet laureate but i kind of became known for my poetry obviously because of the laureate ship but I have been playing music long before I ever even considered myself a poet or a writer in that sense um because I grew up in a family with my mom and my dad they're both music connoisseurs they love music and so I just grew up in a musical household um and my older brother played the trum he plays the trombone and we both had to take piano lessons really early. My mom didn't play music herself, so she had a rule for us that we had to have piano lessons until we were 18. Um, and yeah, we just, I've been immersed in music, listening and playing really since I was a little child. <laughs> so maybe it's the obvious question. Why now is it the debut album? Like what kept you from making that jump beforehand? I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, with timing, I think stuff just happens when it happens. Really, I had gotten kind of ushered into the poetic sphere and, you know, those spaces. And so I was doing the laureate ship. I put out an EP of songs, four songs um, in 2019. And that was kind of, you know, my way of starting to release music. But I didn't know what my debut really was going to be until we just had so much time in 2020 and 2021 in the house. And I was talking to my good friend, Kaina, and she was working on her sophomore album that came out um, a year ago. And we were like, okay, I'm tired of being in the house and doing nothing all day and playing Animal Crossings every day. So let's actually finish these albums. Let's work. So I think that that's kind of where it came. I don't really know. I'd, I'd always known I wanted to make an album, but I think I was kind of just playing stuff by ear. I'm the type of person that really takes my time. Like I'm not really going in accordance to someone else's clock. So I was just like, whatever, my debut album will happen when it happens. Um, and it just kind of became this whole process. I finished the album. I think I finished writing it all in my bedroom, I think in January of 2021. And then I showed my friends, Kaina and Sen. Um, and then we got my friend Namdi involved and the rest is really history. We started just working on stuff and recording and building everything. And that's just kind of how it happened. It was very organic in that way. Yeah. So when you when you know then that you're you're working on a piece, 
something that will be a piece, whether it's conceptual or not. Do you start to get that idea of what you wanted to represent? I mean, I, I see, you know, one of the phrases that used is a sonic invitation to process our grief. Is that mm -hmm. for you? Is that something that comes after in hindsight or, or are you working towards that? Um, I think, I don't know. Sometimes there are some songs like the title track, for example, I had actually started writing that song when I fit around the time I finished high school. So like, 2018 2019 um but I didn't really know what to do with it I just had those feelings and I was kind of just like reliving it was not that long after I lost my best friend so I was like reliving those feelings but I didn't know what to do with it so a lot of times like some of my lyrical processes it takes a lot of real life experience and just real time in terms of reflecting I think that's where some of the poetic the poetic form kind of comes in with my work in terms of just actually just having to let the language do a lot of the work and editing the words and literally just kind of waiting until the words are actually right so a lot of songs you know I kind of had an idea of what I wanted them to sound like but for the life of me I couldn't figure out what the words were going to be so that's kind of the longest part of the process is just figuring out exactly what I want to say because sometimes there are songs that just completely spill out of me like much like poems I will just have something to say and I'll write and it'll kind of all come together that's a very rare fun joyful experience when it just kind of comes to fruition right in front of you but a lot of the songs are really a real effort of just time and trying to figure out what exactly was the right word to put in a certain place yeah well, the reflections that you give on here too, and 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 I'll say this as a listener, not projecting, but what I hear from the album is a lot of moments of like uh, of grappling with how people perceive you versus how you want to be seen. Uh, quite a bit of um, of uh, of uh, of trusting in yourself and 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 finding that self confidence. I think is maybe the other side of that. You know, when you lo do look back on it, do you see those things? Are are, are those the standout moments? And if so. You know, I, I guess the easy question is is why? Yeah, I feel like, and maybe this is also related to astrology. I feel like I'm very different as in the public sphere. Like my public image has always felt so removed from my private one. And I guess that's just life, right? You know, you're never going to know who someone is when they're in their bedroom alone. Like you kind of don't really get to have that experience of anyone but yourself. But I think with my music is kind of trying to find a way to like distill that experience of being alone in my bedroom and distill it to a point where I can present that to the world and to the public to find the kind of middle ground between those selves, if that makes sense. I feel like, especially as a black woman, you know, you have to kind of accept that no matter what industry you're in, whether the music industry or whatever, people are going to perceive you in ways that are so you can't even imagine. You know, there's so many people who think I'm like so mean. And I feel like the beautiful thing about art and, you know, music especially is it can be such a private thing and you can have these moments with yourself and you have to show it to the world, but you're always going to have the process and that gets to belong to you. And so I feel like in a world where I know that I don't really get a lot of autonomy or people aren't going to necessarily offer me, you know, the same autonomy as someone else, I've a I'm able to allow myself and to grant myself autonomy in my artistic process. And I feel like that really helps me like make sense of you know that kind of gap in between how I'm perceived but I feel like that's kind of what the album is about you know like why does the earth give us people to love like we're all put on this earth and people are really weird and people are gonna think really weird things about you so it's kind of like why I feel like the album for me is still trying to get at that question of you know being perceived because it is kind of a thing that I think not a lot of people like <laughs> well and, and songs rarely do they give us the final answers right know, a lot of the times but um yeah and and on the flip side you know you, you talked about sort of knowing musically how you wanted to sound even before you knew what to say 
and and that's obviously a standout point of this because a lot of these they're non-linear songs uh you know in in you know i guess comparison contrast to pop world and i use that in the most broad <laughs> statements you know but like this ain't this ain't the formula when it comes to songwriting it, you know where does that come from for you because you know as much as i hear your poetry and your lyrics I hear the poetry in the way the songs are structured themselves. Yeah, definitely. I have very often been accused of not having hooks. I feel like even working on the album, you know, when we were trying to do certain instrumentation for some parts, they'd be like, oh, let's go to the chorus question mark. You know, like there's not really not always like a through line or a set um, form or standard. But I think poetry definitely helped with that in terms of, because, you know, there's forms, there's poetic forms, there's, you know, satinas and sonnets and stuff but I think the cool thing about poetry is when you learn the forms you also learn how to break them and so like there's so much rule breaking in poetry and poetic license so I love the ways in which you don't always have to it's, it's so unlike a academic essay where you have to hit you know all the points and you have to make sure it's an MLA or whatever but with a song you really can in a poem you can really just explore and kind of give yourself permission to do certain things that you wouldn't get to do in a standard paper and I feel like also I was raised on jazz I was talking yesterday with my dad about Joni Mitchell who was the artist I admire and who also was really influenced by jazz and you know for people who don't know like Joni Mitchell so known for those weird tunings of her guitar but it's because she grew growing up she had polio and she couldn't form certain chords with her guitar um, and I, it became her signature sound. And I'm really obsessed with the ways, you know, in jazz, they took the classical form and they broke, they deviated from it completely and took those classical foundations and completely remixed them and reimagined them. I think I'm always obsessed with, you know, the ways in which we can take the standards and internalize them and learn them really well and then completely wreck them and ruin them. So I feel like that's kind of where I get that from. Even not intentionally. I think sometimes I'm just like, I like the way that this is. I like the way that the song is. And people are like, where is the chorus? And I just never even <laughs> thought to put a chorus in. So It doesn't even matter. <laughs> I like you talking about, this, especially that era of, of Joni, because I don't think it gets talked about a lot, you know, especially when she was working with Jaco Pastoria and, and, mm -hmm. and the mid, mid to late 70s, where it just... That's my favorite album, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that stuff got really, really interesting. But I hear, yeah, I obviously I hear that in your music, and and I love it how, you know, some of these songs start so small. You, bare bones guitar, whatever the instrument is, just you. And by the end of the song, or maybe the middle of the song, you've taken it from the small moment to this big epic, you know, instrumentation that comes along. And and uh, there's no real question there. I just uh, you know compliments about how I love how those songs like you don't need a chorus when it when they're going on a journey like that. Thank you. Yeah, I really admire you know artists like Joanna Newsom who you know completely force us to really rethink you know the space that music takes up. Like, what does it mean? You know, she has these 13 minute long songs, and I feel like I love things like that that just literally challenge the listener and challenge you know what we're used to considering as like listenable music I feel like that's kind of something that I try to embody in my own work as well um of course there are some moments on here with any song in in anywhere you'll hear one thing and it reminds you of something else mm -hmm. and uh dickhead blues you hit that bell and all I can think of is is this Fiona Apple callback <laughs> Because that's the only other song that I think, there it is, you know? That's so funny because it really is. And I didn't know if people were going to even, I guess, notice. But Dickhead Blues really is, in a lot of ways, it's totally, you know, I feel like I couldn't have made that song if I didn't grow up listening to Extraordinary Machine. I just couldn't. <laughs> I feel like that's very funny that it's pretty clearly communicated. <laughs> But totally, that's totally um, something that I admire about Fiona and her lyricism too. the kind of, I feel like she is someone who really complicates, you know, what it means to be singing or like even like, you know, the, her most recent album, I was like, is this rapping technically? <laughs> 
one of the all-time greats that was um one of my earliest concerts was seeing her and uh yeah just incredible and it'll probably be another 10 years before she releases an album and i'll love it even still right you know, <laughs> when it comes around uh brain also is another song i think that i gravitated toward a lot that reminded me not specifically of like a fiona apple song but in the way you know some of her songs uh, y- you feel in the music what you're singing about, you know, this, and I, and I think you're talking about multiple things in this song here, but this, this idea of, of not being able to sleep, you know, even at its, its basis and how the song pushes and pulls against that one. I'd love to hear just about that one's creation. Yeah. Brain is a pretty old, I mean, relatively, it's one of the songs that when we were making the album, I kind of already had it prepared because I've been playing, I wrote brain around this the time that my ep came out in 2019 so i kind of had that song it's one of my favorite songs that i've written actually um and it's one of the only songs that's like you kind of could constitute it as a love song um but yeah i feel like for me i was really trying to with that song grappling with you know someone that i liked obviously but also just this kind of idea of love in general and i'm someone you know, I really admire the writer Bell Hooks and, and her text all about love. You know, she talks about we live in such a loveless culture and, you know, loving people and expressing that in a culture of individualism where it's much more normal to, you know, be negative and kind of cynical. It's so hard to cultivate and nurture, you know, a loving culture and to nurture love and to actually know what it means to love other people. So I feel like with brain, I was really trying to grapple with even myself, even as I was trying to tell someone else that I like them, like, you know, the lyric, like, we're, we're both afraid, you know, I think everyone kind of is afraid to love each other. And so like, you know, I'll give you my fear if you give me yours. I think that that's kind of what I was trying to really contend with in that song is, you know, how do we, the pursuit of loving one another in a moment where, it's really terrifying to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a beautiful moment on the record. Uh, again, one of my favorites. And, and and Rad is another one. I mean, what a great riff and how everything's playing together in that song. And and then we end with Liquor, which is a surprising moment because you've hit the reprise, you know, from where we began. And I don't know if you think about the album in a linear way, but where are we left when 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 we land on on that track? Yeah, I feel like Liquor is like the Her Majesty of the album Mm because I like I love songs like that. I love, you know, those moments where you think everything's done and then you're like, wait, what is this? I feel like Liquor is kind of a way to kind of leave on a question almost, you know, like to not necessarily because the album title is really and the album is driven by the question of the title. And so I feel like as definitive as I can sound as a writer. I also feel like I'm still trying to grapple with that question. I feel like liquor feels like, you know, kind of a way of leaving the space with something else to still grapple with. And also, I think with liquor, I am also trying to kind of approach this like American story, too. I feel like there's a lot of themes throughout the album that are dealing with this you know, the American, the Buildings Roman story, like Rat especially is, you know, what does it mean to kind of live in this country and to try to thrive too? I feel like that is also, you know, an Americana music and country music too, just the working person trying to like make it in this space. And I feel like liquor is also kind of dealing with that theme. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's a it's it is a journey. I keep using that word, but um, it's fun to hear just the way it unfolds from the beginning to the end. And and I see that you're taking out on the road uh, some dates with Daniel Ponder, which I'm such a big mm-hmm. fan of as well. Me too. Yeah. And what's what's I guess that's what's the what's the rest of the plan for the year? I mean, is this one just going to keep you out there? Do you still? Do you, I mean, do you keep a foot in the professional side of the of the poetry um, of your poetry work too? Yeah, I keep a little toe in there. I feel like I have been not as actively doing poetic things. I feel like I've done a few things here and there this past year, but 
it's really been music heavy with the album coming out really soon. Um, and we have some dates in May in LA and then going to have some stuff here in Chicago in the summer. So yeah, it's really, you know, I'm done. Also, I graduate from college in May, so it's kind of, it's kind of a lot of things happening. So I'm also trying to schedule in some room for celebrations and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I really am just kind of as my first my album I don't know what it's like to put out an album so I also am really in real time just letting the process teach me things you know for the next process so I think it's just really about kind of letting things just come out in the world and just see how everyone <laughs> reacts to them I guess it's kind of nerve-wracking but just, I have a lot of friends who've done it already. So I'm really lucky in that way to kind of lean on them. <laughs> yeah, man. And graduating, what a time to launch something like this. An early <laughs> congratulations. Um, I don't think there's any, I don't think you jinx it at this point. Like it's happening, right? That's. <laughs> yeah. Got my cap and gown. I have to record, I have to record my name to send to them so they say it correctly. Nice, nice. <laughs> Well, um, I love the record so much. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. It's been a real pleasure. Of course. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening also. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.